everybody, it's Michael. I'm back with another walkthrough video and today I would like to show you Johari by Lookout Games. It just came out here in Germany this summer, but I think it also premiered at Gen Con. What I have here is the German version from Lookout, which is only German and yes, there is in-game text. But as I already said, the English version, and I guess it's by Mayfair or it's by both Lookout and Mayfair, was sold at Gen Con, if I'm not entirely mistaken, and you should be able to get this. Now, Chohari is by Carlo Larezzi, who did Oddwill. It's for two to four players, ages 10 and up, and plays in about 60 minutes. Thematically, we are gem traders on the Chohari market, which is located in Jaipur, and we're trying to build prestige by hiring nobles to our cause, and also mainly by selling gems. Mechanically, this is a action selection game, not unlike Glass Road or Historia, where everybody puts a card face down, everybody reveals, and then we see what happens. Speaking of seeing what happens, what I would like to do now is show you a full three-player game. Have fun! So, I've set up a three-player game, and as always, let's take a brief look at the components. But for a change, let's start with the material of a particular player. Now, this is the black player. He has seven action cards. Everybody gets the same action cards. And those are the main mechanic of the game. Then on the board, we have a track for the four different kinds of gems. They don't have names. They're only referenced by color, but I guess they're diamonds, sapphires, rubies, and emeralds. And you advance these tracks by selling away these gems. Depending on how far you've advanced each of the tracks, at the end of the game, you'll score points. So for example, if you bring one track all to the end, then that's 20 points. Up here is where we play our action cards. We play three per round. And the second and the third card that you play each round are cheaper. So each card has a print on cost. And the second card that we play is two cheaper than its base cost. And the third card is always free. Then everybody would get a two-side reference card. And these explain the cell action in more detail. The gray and the brown player have a similar setup. And then finally, we have the main board. First, we have a gold track in the middle. Everybody starts with 15 gold, and this is indicated by the marker. Also, turn order is determined by that track, so whoever has more gold goes first. And if there's a tie, like now, then whoever is on top of the stack will go first. Then over here, we have a stack of nobles, divided in three categories, one, two, and three. There are eight of each category in the game, but for any particular game, you only select randomly four of these eight, shuffle them within the category, and then make a stack with the three at the bottom and the one at the top. And of these 12 cards at the beginning of the game, you'll reveal two and put them here on the track. And these nobles can be hired by the players during the game and will give you special abilities and also a small amount of points. And of the remaining 10 nobles, one will be revealed at the start of each round and the deck also serves as a timer because the game goes over 10 rounds. And then finally, we have two market areas. This one here are the shops and each shop only sells a particular kind. So this shop only sells sapphires. And at the start of the game, for three players, we reveal three cards from the huge deck of gems and put them in their shops appropriately. So these are sapphires. This is gold. There's a shop over here that sells both gold and prestige cards. And a ruby. On the other hand, down here we have the stalls. And we fill up these stalls up to and including the number of players. So in a three-player game we will have five stalls. And the stalls can sell everything. So basically we just reveal the cards and put them left to right. So this one sells a gold right now. Diamonds. A prestige card more diamonds and rubies. One final detail about the gem cards. Some of them have this icon, which is the inspector, and those gems are basically fake. And it could happen that the inspector comes by your business and then you'll have to give up these. So having these is a bit risky. There's no further penalty for having these fake gems, but you have to give them up. And finally, as the last part of setup, each player in reverse player order, so starting with gray, can now take one of the available gem cards and put them in their supply immediately. And the gray player decides to start with gold. You can either keep the gold and use it as a wild card later on, but only in very specific cases, or you can just take the amount of gold and add it to your fortune. So the gray player is now at 18. And thus we'll be able to go first in the first round. And then the gold card is simply put in a discard pile. The brown player selects this card with the three blue gems. And he just puts it into his tableau or display. And finally, the black player 
decides to take these three diamonds. And then they're ready to start the game. At the start of each round, a new noble is revealed and the others shift to the right, thus decreasing in cost because down here you see the number of the gems of the same kind you have to pay to hire a noble. So for example, this costs three now and we reveal a new one. And then we have to put out new gems first in the shops. Again, we draw three cards. So a prestige card, a gold card and another gold card. So going to this shop is very lucrative right now because whenever you go to a shop, you get everything in it. And then the cards from before just stay where they are. So we need five new ones. No, this one now sells gold and diamonds. Further diamonds. Rubies. More diamonds. And sapphires. And then we can start with the action rounds or market rounds where everybody will select one action card from the hand of seven and put it face down in the first slot. And let's take a brief look at those seven cards. The first is Bakshish. It doesn't cost anything and it immediately gets you two gold, so basically you're making small deals. Then you have the buy action, which costs four, and you get to take all gem cards from either a shop or a stall, and you can put them in the, your display. Then the trade only costs three, and it either allows you to hire a noble, and again you have to pay either five, four or three gems of the same color, or you get to take all cards from a shop, not a stall, but you have to place them with this card and only get them at the end of the round, and then you can put them in your display, so it's a little less powerful than the buying action, but it's cheaper, of course. And then you have the selling action, which I won't explain in detail now, but basically you're selling gems either to a jeweler, and jewelers take different ones, or to a collector, and they take the same ones. It costs two, and after you have performed a um, sell action, the inspector comes by, and every one of your opponents has to give up one of their fake gems if they have any. Then the final three cards. The first is an exchange. Here you can change one of your gems with one in a shop or stall, but only of the same kind. So this only makes sense if it has a higher value. So for example, you could swap one white diamond with the three over here, or to get rid of a fake one, then we have bribery. If you play this, then for the rest of the round, you don't have to give up any of your gems after somebody plays a sell action. And finally, we have the doppelganger, which allows you to repeat the card you played in the round before, the one on its left, basically. Another great player has to decide what he wants to play. He is first, and he decides that it would be good if it stayed that way. So he decides to get everything that is in here. So he decides to use his buy action as the first one. Okay, everybody has played their first card. Then they're all revealed. So we have a buy. Brown has a buy. Black as a trade, and then in player order, each player gets to perform their chosen action. We want to perform a buy action that costs us four gold. And we also put our marker on the lower row to indicate that we've already taken our action. Now we can take all the gems in one shop or one stall. We decide to go to the shop up here, so we get everything. Now prestige cards are simply put face down and we'll score the, you the points at the end of the game. And with gold you have to decide whether you want to keep it, then it can serve as a wild card, or whether you want to exchange it for wealth. So for one card, you take it to wealth, and the other one stays in our display. Then black is next. He played trade, so that costs three. And now we can either take all the cards in one shop, but only one shop has a display, so that is not really interesting. Or he can hire a noble, that's what he wants to do. He has three gems of the same kind, so he can't hire these two but he can hire that one. Now this goes into his display, he has to pay three, so this goes to this card pile. And from now on, whenever he uses his trade card, he can immediately put the gems in his display. They don't have to stay with the card until the end of the round. Then it's brown. He also performed the buy action. And he selects the stall. And then everybody selects their second action. Our best bet is probably to play the doppelganger to copy the buy action, because for example, this three prestige card and three rubies, and they're not even fake, look very nice. So let's play this one. Everybody can reveal. So yeah, we have doppelganger, and so does brown, and black has the bakshish card. So we will go first. Doppelganger 
lets you copy another action and you have to pay the base cost of that action, so that's four. But cards on the second slot cost you two less, so it's only two. So we pay two, move up again, so we know we've taken the action. Well, we take those two, so we can put the three face down and put the ruby in our supply. Then black is next. They simply get two gold. And now they will be put on top, so they will go first in the next round. And then it's brown. They also have to pay two. And they decide to buy those two. They decide to keep the gold. And then we can go into the last market round. And for that round, Grey decided to use Bakshish, hoping to get to first position again. Brown has a sell action. And black has a buy action. And black will go first. So cards in the last space don't cost anything ever. So they stay at 14. And they decide to get those two. And grey is next. We simply get two. And then brown has a sell action. And normally a sell action would cost you two, but once again, it's free. You can either sell your gems to a jeweler, and then you need different ones, or to a collector, and then you need ones of the same kind. Normally, selling to a jeweler would need four different ones, but you could replace one with gold, so four different ones, like this for example. And whenever you sell to a jeweler, you can advance one of the colors that you're selling by the amount that the card shows. So we could either advance our white marker by two, our red marker by three, or our blue marker by three. Since we have another blue card, let's take red. So one, two, three, and that'll give us 11 points at the end of the game if it stays like this. Then all those are discarded, and after each sell action, all of the players have to discard one of their fake gems if they have any. So the black player did not plan this properly. These, sadly enough, have to be discarded. That is the end of the first round, so everybody takes back their cards. Then these move up and we reveal a new noble. We reveal three new cards for the shops. So it's a gold, a ruby, and another ruby. Fill up the stalls down here. Just one card for every of the five stalls. And then we can decide on our actions again. And from now on, I'll simply show which cards were played as the actions are performed. But remember, normally everybody would select a card, put it face down, then we would reveal, and then we would perform the actions. So gray played buy, brown played trade, and black played bakshish. Buying first costs us four. And buy those two. So now we also have four different ones including a gold, then black simply gets two, brown gets to trade, that costs three. Now we could take those cards, there are two fakes among them, but the thing is, if you use trade to get cards from a shop, the cards are placed under the trade card and you only get them back at the end of the round, and while they're under the card, they're safe from the inspectors. So this is actually what he does, so all those three cards are put beneath this one. If sell for grey, backshish for brown, and buy for black. Black goes first, the buy action only costs him two. Now taking this one would be stupid because we have a sell action coming up, so he decides to take this one. Grey does a sell, it's free, he has four different ones, and he decides to move green up by three. And all these are gone, but nobody has any fake gems. And finally brown gets two. Grey played Bakshish, brown played a Doppelganger, which is basically Bakshish, and black played a trade. This resolved first. He decides to hire this noble, so it costs him three gems of the same kind, so he has to give up these sapphires. And this one will allow him, whenever he's selling to a collector, which is the case you haven't seen yet, then he would be allowed to advance his marker one further space. Grey gets two. And brown gets two. And then it's the end of the round, so everybody takes back their cards. Brown gets these cards put into his display. We can go into the third round. So we get a new noble, starting with the twos now. We get three cards. And gray is going first. He has buy action, so it costs him four. 
And she decides to take these two cards. Black has a trade, so it costs him three. And he decides to take this one. And thanks to this noble, he can immediately put it into his display. Finally, brown has a bribery, which costs him one. This round, he won't have to give up any fake diamonds if there should be an inspection. Black is first. He has a swap, which doesn't cost him anything. And he decides to swap with two, with a fake three down here. Gray is next. He has a trade which costs him one, and he decides to hire Noble. He can pay three to get this one, and this one says immediately put it with one of the action slots. Actions in this slot cost one less. And then we have Brown, who has a buy action, so that costs him two. And he decides to take these two down here. So once again he has everything for selling to a jeweler. Once again, black goes first. He has a sell action, and this time he wants to sell to a collector, so he has to give up gems of the same kind. And the way that this works is a bit peculiar, but basically collectors want the most interesting collection, of course, so if you want to sell gems to collector, you have to have the most of that kind, and that is the case because black has six. But on the other hand, collectors only want to buy something that is hip, or in right now, so there is a second condition. There has to be another player who also has to have at least some of these gems. And the brown player has three. And what happens now is that black is selling these, and these are six. And from that, we subtract the amount that the player with the second most has, three. And then black can advance his marker by the difference. But since this noble allows him to advance the marker one step further when selling to a collector, it's actually over here. And after that, there would be an inspection, but the brown player played bribery before, which was good. And the grey player doesn't have anything. Grey simply gets two gold. And brown does a sell action as well, once again to a jeweler. So he has to give up these four, and then of course he takes the least valuable one. And now he can decide which mark to advance, and so he decides to advance blue. Well, it's a new round, so if you know it comes out, you get a sapphire, diamond, and a prestige card, and then five cards. Gray is first. He has a buy action that now only costs him three. And he decides to take these three, he keeps the gold, so he already has three parts of a set for a jewel. Black has a trade, that costs him three. And he decides to take those two emeralds, and he can immediately put them into his display. And brown simply gets two gold. Brown is first, and has bribe, that costs him nothing. Black has a sell action that doesn't cost him anything. He wants to sell to a collector. He has three emeralds. The grey player has one, so that's a difference of two. However, he gets one extra, so three. And these are gone. And then grey has a trade action that costs him one. And he decides to take these two. The three goes face down. And he decides to convert the two into gold. So he's now first again. Grey's first. He has a doppelganger, so he replicates his trade, doesn't cost him anything. And now he can take either of those two. And both would work for him to complete his set. However, the brown player has played a sell action. So if he were to take the one that is fake, he would have to give it up immediately before he would be able to sell it. So he takes the red one. The brown player, on a hunch, played a sell card because he only has these five rubies and he was lucky, or rather anticipating, that the grey player would get that ruby because now he can sell rubies to a collector. Five minus two is three. So these are gone. Then you have an inspection, but the grey player doesn't have any fake gems. 
and the black player doesn't have any gems at all. And then black does a buy action, and he decides to get these two. Brown play bribe. Gray play does swap, doesn't cost him anything, and he decides to swap his two ruby with a fake three down here. And black has trade, so that costs him three. And decides to hire this noble, costs him two. So he gives up this diamond. And this noble will allow him when he plays the Bakshish card that from then on he doesn't have to give up any fake gems if there's inspection. So basically this is another form of bribery. Grey does a sell action, one of every kind. Gold replaces diamonds and he decides to advance rubies. And then we have an inspection, but nobody's affected. Brown performs a buy, which costs him two. And he decides to take these three cards. And finally black performs Bakshish. So he gets two, and is from now on safe from inspections for the rest of the round. For his last action, Grey performs a buy, and he decides to take these two. Black uses a doppelganger to duplicate the Bakshish card. So it's now first again. And Brown uses a trade card. Now he could either take any of those, or he could hire this noble, and that is exactly what he does. And this one will allow him, when selling gems, that he can replace one gem card with any other one. Then everybody gets back their cards, and round five is over, so we're halfway through the game. After round six, we get another noble, three gems in the shops, a ruby, a diamond, and an emerald, and five cards down here. Black played trade, which costs him three. And he decides to take these two. Grey play the swap, doesn't cost him anything. And he takes this three and swaps it with a fake one. And finally brown, use Bakshish. Grey does a buy for two. And he takes these cards. Brown also does a buy. And he takes these three, so let's keep the gold. And black copies his trade card, so it still costs him one. And he decides to hire this noble for four, so he has to give up everything. And this one is basically a better version of the one that he already has, because this one allows him, when selling to a collector, he can advance his marker an additional two spaces, so these add up to three. Gray duplicates his buy action. And he decides to take these two cards. Brown played a trade. He pays three. And has this noble. This is also a better version. He can put it with any action slot. And actions in this slot cost two less. So it also puts it in his first slot. And finally black buys something. Another problem is if he buys either the rubies or the emeralds, he will give the grey player a nice opportunity to sell stuff to a collector at the start of the next round. On the other hand, these are exactly the cards that he needs. He decides to take the two of these. And it's the next round. So this card moves over. We're getting the first three. This one is just worth playing six points. Gray performs a set action that Costs him one. He has four rubies. Both brown and black have two. So he sells all of them and can advance his ruby marker by two. And nobody is affected by the inspection. Brown is next. He has Bakshish. And so does black. Brown selected trade. So that costs him one. And he decides to take the emerald, but it's put beneath the card. So it doesn't give Grey a chance to sell to a collector. Black also played trade. 
it is let's take the sapphires, put them into this display, and Gray also play a trade. And the only interesting thing that's left for him is this prestige card. Brown played doppelganger to copy trade. He grabs the diamond. Black paid buy. And since he's anticipating that brown player will do a sell pretty soon, he decides to not take any fake gems. So this one. And Gray also selected buy. And there aren't many options left. All the choices contain sapphires, and if he gets a sapphire, then he will give the black player a chance to trade with the collector. On the other hand, he has to get some at some point, so why not take this whole stack? And yes, he'll probably lose one of his fake emeralds, but he has so many of them. Next round, we get a new noble. This one simply has five prestige points. Brown performs a sell action, so that costs nothing. He sells to a jeweler, he picks green, so all of these are gone, and green advances by two. The grey player has to discard one of his fake gems. Black has to pay two. Then he decides to sell his four sapphires. Grey has two, so that's a difference of two, but he gets an additional three. So you know maxed out his sapphire sales. And then Grey has to discard another fake one. And then Grey has a swap, and he swaps the two with the three. Brown has a buy action that costs him two. He decides to take these two. Grey also has a buy action. He decides to take both rubies. And finally Black has a trade that costs him one. The only thing that's left to take is this one. Brown decides to duplicate his buy and he takes these three. Black has Bakshish, so he's also protected from Gray's sell action. And Gray decides to sell to a jeweler by giving up the one ruby, the three sapphire, the one diamond and the one emerald. He chooses the sapphires. And now the brown player has to give up one of his fake gems and he decides to give up these. And the next round. Eight points. Black has a buy action which costs him four. So he's almost broke. He decides to get these cards. Turns in the gold for one gold. Brown performs a swap. He gives up this two and takes the three diamonds. And Gray performs Bakshish. So he's first. Gray performs a bribe. Doesn't cost him anything. Brown does a buy. Costs him two. He decides to take these two cards. He keeps the gold. And finally Black performs a sell action. He wants to sell rubies to collector, he has five. The grey player has two, so that's a difference of three if he sells them all. But thanks to his two nobles, he actually gets six spaces. For the inspection, the grey player is safe, thanks to the bribe. But the brown player has to give up this one. Grey performs a buy. Takes these two. He keeps the gold to form a complete set. Brown makes a sale. You can use the noble to treat this one as either a red or a green. And then he has a full set for a jeweler. And he picks diamonds. Grey is still safe from the inspection thanks to the bribe. But Black player has to give up one. And then Black has a trade. Now he can't hire a noble as he originally planned, so he decides to take the two gold and he decides to keep them. And then we're ready for the last round. This one will give one additional prestige point for each prestige card, no matter its value.
Gray has a buy action, so that costs him three. Okay, so let's take this one. Brown also has a buy action, so it costs him two. He decides to take these two. And finally, black has Bakshish. Black buys for two. The emeralds. Gray sells these four. And he picks diamonds. Black is safe from the inspection. And brown doesn't have any fake ones. Brown decides to trade and wants to hire a noble and decides to pay two and get the one that's worth six points. And that costs him his last money. And for the last action, everybody has selected trade. So let's start with gray. Now he can pay up to six. He has a choice between the one that gives a flat eight and the one that gives a three plus one card for each prestige card. He has two, three, four, five, six prestige cards. So this one would be worth nine and this one would be worth eight. However, the black player would be able to afford the one for four, but not the one for five. So he actually decides to take this one and overpay a little bit more. Black would have liked to get that one. He can't afford this one. And also that wouldn't be good because he doesn't have a single prestige card. So he takes the one for three. Which leaves Brown, who, well, can take this one for one point. And then it's the end of the game, so we can tally the final points. And your points are what you got for selling gems, your nobles, and the prestige cards you collect. So, for the grey player, we have 12 points in prestige cards, plus 8 is 20, plus this one is 21, plus 8 is 29, plus 11 is 40, plus 16 is 56, plus 11 is 67. For brown, we have four points from prestige cards. Five, six, seven, thirteen, twenty-four, thirty-five, fifty-three, sixty-one. And then black doesn't have any prestige cards. For the nobles, he gets nine, plus fourteen is twenty-three, plus twenty is forty-three, plus eighteen is also sixty-one. So black and brown are tied, but the tiebreaker is whoever has more points from his sell actions, and that is black. But gray is the overall winner. And that was one full game of Johari. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of Johari. And hopefully by now you know how the game is played. You've seen that there aren't that many rules. The game is rather e easy to play. Everybody selects a card and so on and so on. The hard thing, of course, is to get into the mindset of your opponents figuring out what they might do next and paying attention to whether somebody can sell before you can do it and how that might affect you. There are lots of nice elements in this, like the jockeying on the gold track. So basically that the track serves as both income and turn order. And then you have the thing with the action slots and the discounts, because basically of course you want to buy first when the display of new gems is still well untouched, but then it'll cost you more unless you can get some of those nobles that'll reduce the prices for you. So you always have to figure out whether it's worth to buy first or whether you should earn some money first, or just save some money. And then of course there's the two different types of sell actions, because you always have to pay attention whether you're helping somebody more than you might yourself. Now I have to say, I guess some of the situations I created in this video were a bit artificial. I wanted to showcase lots of different situations. So while all the moves were legal, at least I hope so, things might go a little bit different if you're playing against real quote-unquote opponents. And I guess that's already it. So as always, thanks for watching, have fun playing and until next time. Bye-bye.